Good evening, everyone. Um, we are kind of sad that we can't see you in real life, but lucky for you, I hope you're outside. I hope you're outside with your uh, laptop uh, enjoying our debate tonight. Tonight we have a debate uh, with three guests that all have a link or background in architecture or urbanism, sociology. And uh, the purpose of tonight is actually that you get inspired by their track record, by, by, the, by their career path that, that is very different. Um, so maybe we're going to start with, uh, I will start with a question to everyone that they present themselves by telling what they studied what they uh, what they are doing now and what their first job was. Uh, so maybe uh, we will start with uh, Lorenzo. So uh, my the first question was what I'm doing right now, what would I study? I, I studied uh, engineering architect at the uh, University of Ghent. Uh, and I graduated in 2011. Uh, my first job was like most of my fellow students was an internship at an architectural firm again, first a real small one, uh, much that is bigger. Uh, but uh, along the way, I chose to uh, change the path. And now I'm a design manager, which has a firm, and a, a project developer firm. And uh, what is a design manager? A design manager is responsible for the uh, first, most important part of a project. Uh, that is to um, to define the program, to define the product, as I uh, like to call it, um, assembling a right design team and uh, attracting the right competences and, and coaching them throughout the design process to finalize, uh, to end up with a permit, a building permit, and then uh, once, once uh, the building permit is uh, obtained than to uh, maintain the quality throughout the project until it is uh, used and it comes alive. Okay. Maybe to quickly give the link with the presentation of yesterday, I told you about different stakeholders within a, a building process. You have the, the architects, you have the, the clients, the buyer, and uh, that's that is the role that uh, Lorenzo has now. Maybe first, Fred, you also studied as an architect. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, when did you finish your uh, studies and what have you been doing the last, or can you quickly explain the, the, what you did afterwards? Okay, um, yes, I studied architecture um, at the Faculty of Architecture of uh, St. Michael's in Brussels and Ghent. Um, I graduated in 2017. Um, since then, I have been um, studying animation at Kask. Um, I've been studying some philosophy at the event. But after, in 2018, one year later, after I did a first year of animation, I started working at the Faculty of Architecture as a teacher, uh, mainly uh, for drawing. That's what I did. And what am I doing right now? Um, Right now, I'm still teaching at the Faculty of Architecture part-time, um, still studying uh, philosophy part-time. Um, also, I'm uh, working on developing my own, um, how do you say, like, not really office, but uh, the project I'm working on with my uh, partner, um, where we uh, try to uh, it's mainly like a research project where we do research on living uh, together with other species in the built environment. Um, we're both also total liberation activists, so that's uh, how that connects. Okay, this because I uh, uh, is that project in uh, Citadelpa where you have a uh, no, oh, so it's not Citadelpa, no, it's in, in, in Citadelpa. Um, recently, uh, a group of friends. Uh, of mine, uh, we came together and uh, made an artist collective, and we signed in for a project in Citadel Park for a residency at the uh, Tirenazio. Um and we uh, got the the residency to, together with another 
a couple of organizations in Yes, um, but we're all uh, kind of politi poli politically active uh, art uh, artists or architects um, who are collaborating there in the Aussie as well. Mm -hmm. At what point, was it already during your studies that you knew you wouldn't want to be a pre practicing a tool of architect? Uh, yeah, um, I also studied architecture in uh, high school, um, and even then I knew I never really wanted to build in the current society, in the way things are organized right now, I don't feel like I can uh, really contribute in a way I would like to um, by building. Um, so because you think that other people can do it better, or because... I guess... It's, you don't believe in the, yeah. um, it's kind of difficult. I think some people may achieve something that is worthwhile, um, but I think it's extremely difficult with current uh, political climate, laws, uh, all the money that is involved. So um, I think it's really difficult to contribute in a way that really matters right now um, by building uh, something okay. for real. Um, so my focus has been mainly on research and education. Um, it, it's interesting now to jump over to the to our third guest, Sophie van der Lanoten, because she is currently working in a, at a public authority where uh, actually they are, if I'm right, Sophie, uh, making the rules or the the frame where 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 to build it. Yes, um, I will first introduce myself and I uh, have a master in sociology, so I'm not an architect, but I have a specific interest in uh, rural and urban sociology, and that's how my career started. I started as a researcher at the Kali Leuven. Uh, there was uh, a research on the livability of small villages in the West Hook. It's the region around uh, yeah, Ypres and, and Popering and so on. Um, and that was really interesting because uh, the research on the livability of these small, these small villages was translated into a strategy. And when you translate that in really in concrete projects, it uh, involves um, uh, village co core village renewal projects or the building of community centers and stuff like that. Um, so I wasn't an architect, but at that point we um, we installed a quality chamber uh, of which Bob van Riet also participated, and I was the secretary of that. So I didn't study it, but I I learned it on the field. Um, let's say. Uh, and after after that, I worked uh, for seven years for the province of West Flanders on the on this livability uh, study, um, and then I worked for CBA Centrum for uh, government communication, and then I was freelancer for seven years. I was communication ah, okay. I was a communication manager uh, for. Uh, private architectural firm, but I also um, guided uh, some municipalities in uh, making master plans. Uh, I was secretary of the price of Baumeister several years at uh, the Flemish building master. And all that, that experience came together in the job I'm doing now. I'm doing now, uh, what I'm doing now is I am uh, uh, general director of Vinico. And Vinico is um, it's not a public authority, it's semi-public, um, but uh, Vinico is a, a company to which the 21 municipalities around Ghent are affiliated. And we do not build ourselves, but we create a, 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 a framework in which they can build. Uh, so, for example, a municipality wants to uh, realize a housing project, but there's a real complex uh, owner structure. Uh, so we have the authority to um, yeah, the grote kopen, how do we say it, to 
To buy, yes, yeah, to buy the land, uh, yeah. to ja, ontijgen hun ook. Ze zijn met dat woord dat ik zoek. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dus it's very specific. But um, we have the authority to, to buy that land and uh, then uh, we install a promoter architectural competition, for example, and then we, uh, yeah. so in which we build in um, quality guarantees so that the, the housing project itself is expropriate, yes, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, that's how we work. So we do not build ourselves, but everything that we do um, yes, has to do with the architecture and the urban plan. If I'm right, uh, Sophie, you also work as a communication manager in an um, architecture firm. What did you do there? What did I do in this one? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what did I do there? Um, yes, uh, Lorenzo was an intern. Uh, he did his internship. We uh, sat ne next to each other when he did his internship. And he just told me what I was doing at that time. I was building a new website. Uh, I was organizing an architectural cafe for all the collaborators because it was a firm with uh, different uh, on different locations which are again and Brussels so um, photograph the, the projects uh, that kind of things also um, awards uh, the competition awards for uh, make submission forms that's that kind of things uh, maybe Lorenzo you started working in architecture as uh, for how different was it from, was it, was it a reality check from the studies you made? Not really. Uh, Sophie just mentioned that we met in 2008 at one of the firms, and that was my first and my second summer internship. So I was lucky to never have uh, to go back to the exams in the summer, day, summer uh, days. So uh, of those uh, three months, I used each year one month to do an internship at a at a different uh, architectural firm. So during my studies, I, I quickly saw the internal uh, workings of the firm, the challenges, uh, what was interesting, uh, what was what the uh, frustrations were. Uh, and uh, this, this uh, gave me a sense of uh, reality uh, from the earliest yeah. moments. And then, of course, uh, I still wanted to become an architect. I, I had in mind to have an, an, my own architectural firm uh, when I graduated. So I started my internship at first at a small uh, get in uh, office, then afterwards at, at, uh, at Oxford Architect for uh, two years, and then one year in uh, Ordnab, uh, focusing on, on passive housing. And while I was studying or working, as uh, in those first firms, I studied uh, business, business economics at the University of Ghent because being planning to have an architectural firm or perhaps growing throughout the ranks in a more, larger firm and become a project architect or a business uh, uh, architect, I, um, I studied economics because I thought it would be useful. And those studies made me realize that. Um, I was living in, uh, let's see, the, the, the house of architecture wasn't, wasn't big enough for me. Uh, there were things I wanted to do, initiatives I wanted to take that weren't allowed within the role I had to play. So after a couple of years, I said, uh, bye. Well, can you be a bit more uh, specific about which, I don't know how to say it, which tasks or which responsibility you couldn't take as an architect? Simply didn't have the initiative. Uh, the initiative always came from, uh, like I say, a bow here, uh, uh, a commission, commissioner, uh, yeah, um, yeah. clients. Yeah. Um, those were the ones who took the initiative and uh, already defined a lot of what was had to to happen. They defined the product already. They didn't didn't use opportunities to the fullest. They missed the big ideas. Uh, they, uh, I thought there was. Too few quality, too little quality in, in the in the clients we had. I thought if this is the, the what they have to offer, I, I think I can do it better with my background. 
So that's why, uh, together with more practical uh, problems I had with the profession, with the law, with the lex on even that, with the young, with the, with the uh, uh, all those things combined, I, 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 I thought it was a difficult choice for me because being an architect, it's kind of a, mm. it's almost a, an identity. Uh, it goes along with a lifestyle and a way of thinking. Mm. It was hard to set this aside and to choose for what I thought what would be worth uh, interesting. I, I don't know if, if you had the same uh, experience, but I remember I'm also an architect uh, used to or a practicing architect that when you finish your degree, it was kind of not done to uh, to do something else than working really as an architect, that working for a developer or um, this more cool yeah, to work for a developer, it was kind of the rules. neat cuisine, yeah. Uh, did you graduate with that same feeling? Uh, of course, uh, you're, you're teach to be the moral, you're teach to be the fighters of morals and uh, the goods in the world as an architect. And in that way, it's also, in my opinion, it's, it's within the architecture uh, community, uh, being commercial or thinking about uh, profits or uh, that is that is uh, looked down on uh, apart from uh, that you can really do good in different roles but that is has a lot of to do with the yeah the, the, the negative feeling about leaving the profession of architects is it do you feel it now in your new role or being on the other side that it's a challenge to Combine being uh, with Stevens and also have a, a quality in the architecture, in the product or in the, the building wall? Is it difficult? It's not so difficult to, to combine it uh, both because quality, well, people want, want quality. Uh, and that's, uh, that's one of the big lessons I learned very quickly. That it, if you try to, as a developer, try to develop products that are just cheap and combine have to with the quality within them, uh, it doesn't work. It does. It fails. So uh, you have to find the right balance between what people want, what is affordable, what is obtainable, um, and fight off every actor that wants to uh, maximize their own um, interests. Being the construction, the uh, construction Contract. firm, yeah. contractor, uh, being the engineer being an architects as well, uh, at a certain level, they do have their own interests that are not always good for the quality of a project. Uh, communities have their own uh, interests. Every actor has his own interest, and it's the role of the architect. And I think it's a, a bigger role for the client uh, to, to protect the equilibrium between everything. Yeah, it's eventually you always feel on the field. The tension between good architecture and a profitable project. Yeah. Especially now, um, I, I understand some of the implicit criticism because you said I want to, don't want to be an architect in this kind of environment. Uh, the, the pressure of, uh, sorry, you sorry, it's economic term, the pressure of low interest money trying to find protection against inflation. If you if you put money on the bank right now, it depreciates in value. Yeah. And so much it's so yeah, yeah, so much so that interest on the bank cannot compensate. Mm -hmm. So people with a lot of money try to find uh, investments to beat the inflation and perhaps might make a little problem. And uh, because all the other options are quite risky right now, uh, most of a lot of the money flows towards uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. And that is, to my opinion, the biggest challenge to uh, think quality right now. We have a feeling that you uh, are making less profits than the real sharks. To say it like that? I don't think we can complain about the profits, but um, the people who are making the biggest profits right now are the, the owners of the building sites. The land plots. Yeah. Is it because uh, they, be they are becoming less available? The were fully built in Belgium? That's a difficult question because implicitly there is enough construction sites for 2050. 
it's the more it, the sites that are uh, most the nicest to live, the most uh, desirable. Everybody focused on that. For example, in Ghent, the project to be built in Ghent uh, it attracts uh, flies like right. <laughs> manure. <laughs> so um, yeah, that is that is the biggest challenge. Good plots that a lot of money tra- that attracts a lot of money. Maybe very shortly, I'm interested, Fred, to know um, how the world should be or the society should be that you would maybe build, or that's mm-hmm. maybe a difficult question. I don't think Just I am I'm in a place to like uh, describe a utopian future, but uh, my reading of current uh, the current society um, is uh, viewed from my study of uh, Marxist economics and uh, libertarian socialist politics, which uh, like in layman's terms would be like uh, anarchist uh, uh, politics. And more concretely, um, within the viewpoint of total liberation, like I would like to see a society without structural uh, domination or uh, inequality, which I think is possible, not maybe in my lifetime or even a few lifetimes past. Um, but I, I don't want to contribute in a way to elongate the process. Um, and that's why I, I feel a lot of projects who want to do good for society without taking into consideration the, the inherent problems of current society are at risk of prolonging the, the journey it will yeah. take to get to the end uh, where, where we can, can get past capitalist uh, economics um, the, uh, in the midst of private property, of uh, speciesism, uh, the, this kind of so for me, it's, I, I, I see, and I don't criticize people who do, it's just I don't want to contribute to it. And I like to uh, educate others um, about my viewpoints or about the te- theories which are written down. And that's why I went to study animation, animation film at Cusk, because I, I realized that at my uh, time at university, I was making projects always in a narrative way. I was t- telling stories and I was using architecture to tell stories, making the utopian cities or making dystopian cities or taking one aspect of society and making a spatial translation of it. Like um, one time I uh, designed a human farm where the story was what if we realized that um, using other species as ourselves for our own benefit is immoral. Why couldn't we um, use those same products we take from, in this case, animals from ourselves? It would be more sustainable, it would be more healthy, and it would be better for the animals and for us. So I designed a way for humans to get forcefully impregnated, which we do with cows, to have human milk, to eat human flesh, and how we can design it in a way that is socially acceptable in like very soothing uh, environments where people come mostly freely. But then it was also designed in a capitalist society. So you have the poor who are forced because of their uh, social status to uh, harvest themselves and contribute to the society. So I realized I was doing these narratives all the time and I wanted another way of um, communicating these things uh, to the world. And that's why I went to study animation. But then I realized my knowledge of the theory wasn't deep enough. So I went to study uh, philosophy. Uh, I'm curious, uh, Fred, to know, you're doing a bit of research, more art, activistic projects if i understand well mm-hmm. um how do you how do you live from there mm-hmm. how do i eat yeah and stay dry how do you buy um, things <laughs> yeah um for me and, and also my partner it was very important that our um our works we make together or ourselves our activism and our uh, artistic projects um that we should be completely economically um uh, not reliant on them to survive so that they can stay pure. So we don't have to make things if we don't want them. We don't have to collaborate with people we don't agree with um, and those kind. So we don't survive 
of those projects. <laughs> we do them for ourselves. We um, we give them to to the world. We try to um, get in contact with our community and talk about the drumming pigeons in the in the coupure. Um, they roost under a bridge and they fall in and they drown. And there's nothing to to help them. And even there isn't a system in place to take care of pigeons. We take care of other exotic birds um, in like, um, how do you say it? Um, Vogel book central, mm. those kind of things. Yeah. There's never a place for pigeons there because there are pets. Seen as a yeah. <laughs> um, and it was not only because of, because of um, we needed money to survive, but we really think uh, education is a very um, important part of society and wanted to con contribute in that way as well that we both um, started I wanted to teach and we were talking to our teachers while we were studying we want to teach as well can you um, get, um, stay, stay in touch with us connect us with people um, and that's why we were able to start teaching so early after we graduated yeah. because we had this mission of yeah, contributing to society in that way um, yeah. through teaching um, and mainly our, our role at the university, not our activism or our political views, but more the way we um, tackle projects is from um, more of an explorative um, if yeah. way um, where we use hand-drawn pictures um, and collage and, and multiple media to make our, our um, design projects because we do design stuff, um, like for the pigeons in, yeah. in the in the canal. In the canal. Um, so our design approach, we think, is very valuable for architects today, where everything has to be um, more efficient and, go, and has to go faster. Um, also, because of the uh, current political and economical climate, okay. and this is it also yeah. the case. And we want to be like the biggest uh, room, yeah. where we say maybe there is value in the old way of doing things. And, uh, yeah. Can I say something? Yes. Um, about that, because you are talking about contributing to society. Um, this is also what, what our goal is. Eh? We have a societal purpose uh, mm -hmm. sure. as an intercommunal um, organization. We, uh, we assemble expertise on a regional level. And in this way, we help our municipalities, for example, to reach the goals of the Convenant of Mayors, for example. Uh, a municipality is often too small to do that, that on their own. But when you uh, group that expertise on a regional scale, well, uh, in this way, we provided in the autumn more than 50 buildings of solar panels, on sports schools, on uh, government buildings on, um, you know, on Zorg Centra, you name it. So that's also a contribution to society sure. from our uh, society. This is, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the heart of okay. what we do. Sophie, in the, the current environment you're working now, are there a lot of architects working in there? And do they, if students would work kind of putting the frame uh, of the building process or, or, or the environment, do you think they need an extra um, upload uh, study? I, I don't know if they need an extra uh, study. Uh, I also learned the job on the field. I don't think uh, education is everything. You can learn a lot by doing things. Um, but yes, we do work with a lot of architects and we do, we, we are looking for collaboration with universities as well to provide students a chance to, to, to do an internship also with us. Next week, there's someone starting, um, but there are a lot of um, issues. There are a lot of issues that we are, uh, that we see that would be interesting for students as well to do to do the workshop on or uh, to do their master thesis um, or uh, so and and in in a way that we also provide um, that first experience on the job so that's that's um, yeah. a win win mm -hmm. possibly yeah. okay maybe for the three guests do you have any advice to the students uh, because in June, July they finished 
how they should start their first steps in their professional life? I just think it's really uh, important that you know um, what your stance is uh, on stuff. Um, what do you mean with stance? Um, your, your views on the world. That you know why you believe the things you believe in. So it's not just taken for granted that you, it shouldn't be taken for granted that you believe the things your parents uh, told you. Um, so do, do your research, um, know what, um, it's important also to know what other people believe in and why. And so you can take your own stance in that way. So you're sure about the things you, you do mm -hmm. later and you, you don't have regrets. Um, I think that's the most important thing. If you know what you stand for, I don't think you can make wrong decisions. Yeah, I, I, I agree with most of that. I think everything uh, about that. Um, well, to be practically, uh, to be practical, uh, they have to choose immediately after they graduate. So uh, I would, I think an internship as an architect is always uh, interesting because it advises you a bit of freedom to explore within that cocoon of architecture um, what is happening. It's, it's because architects have to think holistically. Uh, it's a good helicopter view about what, of things that are happening uh, in society as a whole, uh, about building projects to be uh, very specific, uh, but never to, uh, to forget what we were interested in as a student. Uh, and um, to keep exploring the interests you have, mm -hmm. because it, my 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 uh, biggest regret uh, in my professional career right now is that I meet too few architects and different different positions. It's not because you study architecture; you have to become an architect. Mm -hmm. And very few uh, architects, especially in the beginning of their career, more when they're forty. They're trying to do uh, make some changes, but especially in the beginning of their career, they feel obliged to follow the same path, to start as an intern, to have their own firm, or to keep working in a bigger firm. But um, that was my experience. Uh, do that to begin with, but keep ex keep uh, exploring your interests, and uh, you'll find your path if you have the courage to step out of the 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 normal uh, and the the part everybody oh, thinks. I don't know yeah. how you see it. Because yeah. a lot of architects complain about uh, construction firms or uh, municipalities yeah. or other actors that they don't think like architects. But every architect wants to, no architect wants to leave their own cocoon. It's like they're in a castle with a moat and then they draw up the bridge and everybody outside is the enemy. But you have to go outside and, and enter the field in every possible way. And then just the quality can only. Uh, yeah, you can use can the. Better, uh, you can use, yeah, of course yeah, you can okay. use the, the the skills you learn as an architect to think holistically to to, to investigate, uh, via sketch or or other or fashions. But those qualities uh, are are wanted in, in so many fields. Okay. So I I'd suggest keep your mind open to do those things. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the same answer to this question. Do what you love to do. Um, follow your interests because that is what is most important um, and the rest will follow from there but uh, life is a yeah, lifelong learning experience and in an ideal situation you, uh, you come in a situation where you can continuously uh, mm -hmm. study mm -hmm. and explore so that is the yeah. same uh, feeling I have about that it's, so follow your interests and, and really do what, you, what you're what interested in. Thanks. Thanks, uh, the three of you. I hope it inspired all of you a bit. Uh, it was pretty short. I hope uh, it was a bit clear for you. Maybe if you... It's just a proposal that makes it. Um, if you guys have... Uh, other questions to the several guests? Don't hesitate maybe to add the uh, email addresses. Voilà. Maybe you see this uh, later, this, uh, this training or this debate. Like I said, don't hesitate. Try simply guess to ask for uh, more questions. I also have a, a profile on LinkedIn and I can always al also uh, 
in a broader scale, because I see all these different roles you can have in architecture, I can always advise or coach you in the. Uh, 